three weeks suspension, huh? Without pay. I guess that means you won't be coming around to me for waterfront information for a while. As a matter of fact, I need you now more than ever, Tom. And come. I think you'd want to take it easy. Maybe do a little pier fishing, you know? Yeah, well, I gotta prove something. Clear my name. Okay, how can I help? Remember the picture I gave you, that little mystery man of mine? Yeah, I haven't seen him, though. I got a hunch he's not even in Port Charles anymore. Could be hiding. No, no, I don't think so. I would have heard something about that. You haven't? No. But then you got to realize there are some things that go on here I don't hear about. Well, not much, I bet. Well, some. There's an APB out on the guy. No, if a guy like that doesn't want to be found, he won't be found, kid. Is there anything on Tessie? Yeah, I hear that she's uh, due in tomorrow. No kidding. No, oh, it's right here. Let me ask you something. Have you heard anything about Tessie being involved in the underworld here on the waterfront? No. Well, you know, she is a smart old bird. So you're saying that if she was involved, she wouldn't necessarily tell anybody about it? Yeah, well, you know, my bait shop gives me a wind on the whole waterfront. I see the bad and the good. But I've never connected her with anything bad. And keep your eye on that window, okay? Hmm. Tessie just may be the key to something something she didn't even know about. Mm, could be. I got this gut feeling she could lead us to what's going on down here on the waterfront. Mm. You damn near blew our whole operation, Tuffy. What are you talking about? What did I do? You used your key to come in the back door of this building and you were spotted by Frisco Jones. I was? You were. Now, from now on, we have to keep up an appearance of doing union business and union business only. And for your information, I've already changed the lock so you can throw away your key. Okay. Okay, I'll get rid of it. We can't make mistakes in this business. I guess it's another scam. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. <sighs> Look, you're through with me, and I, uh, I gotta go make arrangements for Tessie's docking tomorrow. You've been talking to Damon? Well, we speak now and then, yeah. I've already told them we can't handle that much cash here in Port Charles. It's a tough man to say no to, you know. Oh, I'll say no all the way to the top if I have to. Because I intend to be out of this phase of the operation in four weeks. You still sort of me? No. I'm sort of about something else. Port Charles is my city. At least for the next four weeks. I don't want you to forget that. I won't, boys. See you later. Sir, hello, Damon. How are you, Tuffy? Damn it, Damon, you owe me an explanation. About what? For setting Frisco Jones up in that poker game. I know you were at the bottom of that. I don't think I owe you an explanation about anything. Port Charles is still my town. You can't take action like that without first consulting me. There is no consulting where Mr. B is concerned. You ought to know that by now. He learned that the rookie cop was a threat to our laundering operation. He ordered something done about it. I did it. And now the rookie's off the police force for three weeks. That uh, suspension probably saved his life. Oh, so now you think he's off our backs? Oh, for at least three weeks. Just the same, I'd keep an eye on him. Ought to be easy enough for you to do. His wife works for you. I presume she likes you. Probably even trusts you. Now, do you suppose we could finish the conversation we were having when she interrupted us this morning? Yes. I want to know more about these plans. Well, tomorrow will be Tessie's last run. Go on. At the end of this week, we shift to plan B so we can double the intake of the cash. I already told you it's too fast. Uh, you can tell me, but it won't change anything. Hmm? The schedules have been set up. The machines for transport will be here by the end of the week. I've already had Tuffy speak to Tessie and tell her that we're not going to be using her boat for the drop-offs anymore, at least for a while, because the plan got too hot. You're making a mistake. I would suggest that you don't let your opinions reach the ears of Mr. B. You've got to tell Mr. B that Port Charles is too small to handle that kind of cash. And if you don't tell him, I certainly will. And his answer will be, yes, it can. And then, where will you be? Oh, let me tell you where I'll be. 
If I get caught, I'll be in jail. We have the best lawyers in the country. And if I go to jail, this whole operation will then crumble. And if I'm in jail, you'll all be in jail. Not if you keep your mouth shut and follow orders. Hmm? Mr. B hasn't done so badly by you so far, has he? Your back's up against the wall, Lavery. You don't have any choice. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> Oh, here he is, Tanya. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, he is adorable. Felicia, you've got to look at these. Look at this. <laughs> look at the little belly on that. Isn't Ooh, it cool? I could just eat him up. <laughs> when you have your baby, you have Felicia right Ooh. in the same building. <laughs> I know, that's great, because you're so good with kids. No, I don't think I'm good with anything today. I know you're trying to keep my mind off of what happened to Frisco. Oh, his suspension will be over in three weeks. It's not the end of the world. No, you don't know. I just have this awful feeling that all the cops' wives are just going to say, I told you so. Don't you believe that for one second. When something goes wrong, we all stick together. We're not all perfect. But when there's trouble, it brings out the best in all the wives. Oh, Mrs. Lewis. It's Maggie. And if you don't feel like cooking, it's a one-dish meal. Oh, I'm, I'm so... I mean, thank you. Hi, Hi. Nina, Tanya. Hi. Yeah, put it down. I want to tell you a story. Story? Now, you all know my husband, the uh, tough, by-the-book Captain Lewis. Mm -hmm. Well, he was once an over-anxious rookie, just like any other rookie. Even like Frisco? He was probably more like Frisco than anybody I know. And if he finds out I'm telling you this story... Well, anyway, talk about over-anxious. He sees this woman on the street and thinks she's soliciting. And he wants to make his first caller, and he thinks, this is it. He doesn't listen to her story, that she's soliciting political backing for her husband. Guy grabs her, and he drags her to the police station and proudly announces his first caller. The woman is the mayor's wife. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the truth. He didn't. He did. Oh. It was then that I decided that I had to take him in hand and manage him. I mean, let's face it, we're the brains behind the badge. Yeah. Felicia, yeah. you just have to take Frisco in hand. How is it with doctor's wives? The same. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I might find you here. Somebody told you about what happened today, huh? Tanya. Yeah. It's pretty humiliating. I sort of think irresponsible is a better word for it. Yeah, well, when are you going to start taking it one step at a time? Tony, you don't know anything about it. People I graduated with from the academy, I mean, they all have collars. I have zero. Big deal. Yeah. Yeah, it is a big deal to me. Well, did they call you on the carpet because you didn't make an arrest? I didn't think so. So why don't you tell me what happened so I don't have to think the worst? Tony, I'm on to something down here. And I have a feeling it's going to be big. I just can't put my finger on what it is yet. Okay, so what'd you do to get in so much trouble? Well, I went, I went solo on this one part of the investigation. I broke a few rules, too, I guess. Didn't being a cop important enough for you to follow a few rules? Sure it's important to me. But I became a cop to help people, Tony. Now, that may sound stupid to you, but that's what I believe in. It doesn't sound stupid to me at all. It sounds great. I broke some rules because I had to. Because my instincts tell me that there's dirty pool going on down here, and it's a big game. And they put these rules on me to tell me I can't do what I feel I have to do. What happens to you? You're a doctor. When you believe something, when your instincts tell you something, and there's rules confining you, what do you do? It happens to me sometimes, and I check my instincts, and I recheck them before I act. Whatever it is, Tony, it's big. 
I was set up to be framed. You know what that means? That means somebody's feeling the heat from me. Listen, maybe they suspended you for your own good then. Maybe they're trying to protect you. Maybe that's what some of those rules are for. On the other hand, if I'm a cop, isn't it my business to take risks? I don't know, that really puts me in the middle. Well, explain it to me. How do you feel? Well, part of me thinks the department's right in coming down on you. And the other part of me has so much faith in you. You mean that, don't you? Yeah. I really do mean that. Anybody home? Honey. You're so beautiful. This is beautiful, but you're the most beautiful. <laughs> wow, I'm a little thrown. Why? Well, I was thinking you'd want all sorts of explanations about why I was suspended, so I was down at the dock sort of preparing myself. No, no, the only thing you have to prepare yourself for is dinner and me. Oh, I owe you. No. Honey, I know this has been the worst day of your life. You walked in the door and you closed it. Well, I want you to close the door on the whole day. It's really been the worst crisis we've had since we've been married. It made me really think about the wedding vows a lot. And I think the best way that I'm supposed to handle this is just to support you. Oh, things are getting better by the minute, you know that? Tony, um, sort of found me down at the dock. He could wring my neck, but he's gonna stick with me. He's very important to you. I'm glad he trusts you the way I do. I don't want you to worry about the future. I'm gonna be back as a cop before this three-week suspension is over, I'll bet you. <clears throat> you know what? What's that? I think Anna may have done me a favor by suspending me. Honey, I'm gonna find out what is going on down at the waterfront. I'm undercover now. I'm not gonna be getting paid, and I won't have any authority, but nobody's gonna tell me what to do. I, um... Made a few notes. Did some thinking about a few people I'm suspicious about. Mm-hmm. Would you care to hear what I came up with? Of course. I'd like to know. Well, there's Tessie. Now, I know she's involved, but I don't know to what degree. And there's my little mystery man, Stan. Mm -hmm. I know there's a connection between the two. Angel Moran, of course you know him. No, not very well. I just see him at work every now and then. And there's Duke. What? Duke Lavery. Oh, no, Frisco, I think you've got him all wrong. He's a really nice man. And I don't think you should be suspicious of him at all. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm just unsure about one thing, that's all. What? Well, his explanation of... Tuffy going into his back door. Just doesn't quite wash with me. I want more information. You'll get it when the time is right. No, I want it now. What are these machines you're bringing up? You'll find out when they get here. That's not good enough. I have to know the details. We found a new way to bring the money in a safer way, by land instead of by boat. Oh, this is plan B that's on the computer sheets. Yeah, exactly. Nothing's changed, Duke. It's just a, a new way to handle the money that's being received. Look, I've waited as long as I can for you to make up your mind. Now, are all systems go? Oh, do I have a choice? You want to put your head in a noose with the boss? It's your funeral. 
We'll try to handle the first ship. I knew you'd see things our way. There is one condition. Name it. No more rough stuff. What happened to Prisco Jones? It won't have to happen again. If the rookie's smart. I'm gonna hold you to that, Damon. You go back in your word one more time, and all bets are off. I'll have more information for you by tomorrow on the, uh, the new plan. As a matter of fact, I think I'll make a phone call now to set up the meeting in the morning, if you don't mind. Are you worrying about something? When your arms around me, I never worry about anything. You know, what if I take my arm away? Don't, because then I'd start worrying. You know, you've really helped me get my feet back on the ground tonight. Thank you. I'm glad. So I guess maybe you need a little reassuring? You know, I can always use that. <sighs> Honey, I didn't become a cop for no reason. It's not like a flash in the pan idea, you know. No, I never thought it was, Frisco. Well, a lot of people might think that. Now, me being suspended and neglecting my duty, that's a mark against my name. Now, I have to to try to do something to clear that. You understand? Yeah, I know. I know that. Well, then, honey, what are you worrying about? Oh, Fisk, I don't want to nag you. You wouldn't be. I've asked. I want to be like all the other cops' wives. I want to be behind you all the way. Oh, you are, sweetheart. You are. You talk to Vince. Does Nina tell him she worries about him? All the time. Well, then it's okay. I'll tell you. You're gonna prove yourself again. Yes, I am. But without the police department behind you... Well, what I mean is... is that you're gonna go out all by yourself, and if you get into some kind of danger... that's what worries me... is that you're not gonna know when to stop. Are you angry that I'm worried about that? I absolutely love you for it. Well, you're finally somewhere where you're supposed to be. Just what is that supposed to mean? Tried calling you all night about the meeting this morning. You weren't home. Not that it's any of your business, but I was out to... With the lovely Anna Devane, huh? Yeah, remember I saw you two leave the pub together? And just for the record, everything you do is my business. What I do in my own time is none of your concern, Damon. What is this meeting about? Well, two visitors from out of town are dropping by to put the next step of our plan into operation. Who are they? Mr. Philip Wilder and a Mr. David Marlowe. Well, I've never heard of them. What do they do? You know, I think you're hanging around too much with Chief Devane. You're beginning to sound like a police detective. This is still my operation, Damon. I don't take too kindly to strangers coming in here telling me what to do. Well, these men are experts in their field. They'll perform tasks that your union flunkies couldn't begin to approximate. You still haven't answered my question. Mr. Wilder is a computer expert. Mr. Marlowe is a very highly placed accountant in our operation. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. I know how to operate my own computer, and I don't need an accountant. I've already employed a very competent young woman who handles my books. You know, you know damn well that these men are here on Mr. B's orders. And nothing gives you greater pleasure than to see them carried out and also to rub my face in it. You're loose change when it comes to the size of our operation here, Duke. If I were you, I wouldn't press my luck. Well, can you tell me anything about this new operation? I don't know that much about it, actually. Philip and David will fill us in when they get here. Uh, I do know that the code name for the operation is Tumble Dry. Laundry 
today? Yeah, I was hoping you'd take some of this stuff down to the laundromat. Uh, well, honey, I can't. I got a lot of things I have to do this morning. Well, I can't either. I have a job I have to get to. Oh, a job. The first real jab about me not working. Go ahead, let's, let's get it all of your system. Go ahead, have at it. Hmm? Frisco, that's not what I meant. I know you're not enjoying the suspension, but I just thought while you were home, maybe you could do some housework mm -hmm. while I'm at work. I see. And it starts with the laundry, and the next thing you know, I'll be walking around in floppy slippers, and I'll be watching daytime television and making tuna casserole. No thanks, not for me, uh-uh. Fine, well, just next time you don't have any clean clothes, don't complain to me. You're not going to be able to live in this uniform for a long time now. You know? uh, the uniform, there you go again. What are you doing with the uniform? I have to put it with the rest of the wash. Honey, you can't wash it. That has to be dry cleaned. Here, give me that. You can't afford dry cleaning, Frisco, until you get your job back. Well, I'll have my job back. Just here. You'll ruin the uniform, sweetheart. Frisco, dry cleaning is not the only luxury we're going to have to give up on for a while. Until you get your job back, we have to cut a lot of corners. I will have my job back in no time. Yes, but still the same. We have to take lots of precautions. First of all, we can't go out to eat. I made you a sack lunch. It's in the refrigerator. Secondly, I canceled your hair appointment. I'm going to cut your hair myself. I think that all the savings on all those things together will leave us in baloney for at least a month. It's the first time going hungry sounds like the best option. You know, none of this would be happening unless it wasn't for that stupid poker game. Somebody set me up. But you don't know which one? No, not yet, but I got a good idea. Well, why don't you take your ideas to Anna and maybe she'll put you back on the floor. No, I'm not going to anybody until I have positive proof. Frisco, that's the attitude that got you kicked off in the first place. Well, thanks for the support, honey. Honey, I'm just worried about you. I don't want to see you getting into any more trouble. Well, don't worry about me, all right? I'll be fine. Okay. Come in. Hey, you two. Have you had breakfast yet? Um, we just had coffee. I'm afraid that's all we have in the whole house. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, um, Jake wanted me to ask you to join us downstairs for breakfast. How about that? Well, I'm not very hungry, <laughs> but I'll get dressed. Okay. Oh. Everyone's real concerned about him um, being suspended from his job. How are you going to make ends meet? Terry, see you downstairs, okay? Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> hey, meet both of you. I've heard a lot about you, or should I say about your mysterious plans. There's nothing mysterious about it, Mr. Lavery. It's just our operation has become too large to be handled in the simplistic way that it's been handled here previously. We've always managed to do the job. Mm, not without some very close calls. Yes, but Mr. Lavery is right. All in all, the laundering operation has been very successful. And because of that success, a decision has been made to enlarge the operation. We're talking large amounts of cash, which couldn't possibly be handled through the one system you're currently using. Uh, and that's where Tumble Dry comes in. That's right. Tumble Dry is the computer file name for the new operation. I'll be reformatting your computer, Mr. Lavery. All of the Mr. B information will now be hidden in the hard disk section of your computer. Why is that? It's a safer practice than storing the information on floppy disks. We wouldn't want your girlfriend to use one for a coaster. That'd be very embarrassing for you, Duke. Hmm. What about the access code? It's been changed to laundry. That file will store all of the Mr. B business in separate subdirectories. Tumble Drive will be one of those subdirectories along with related subjects such as the Fisherman's Wharf Project and the Phony Union Pension Fund. And these subdirectories will be coded in the same way that we've coded the tumble dry file. And you're sure that this information will be safe in the computer? The only part of the information that an untrained user could access would be the display directory under the laundry category. You need the access word laundry to pull up the tumble dry file. You still haven't told me how this tumble dry operation will work. We plan to transfer the money in laundry machines. The machines will be delivered by truck. And we'll still use Port Charles as our base of operation. You hold it right there. It's going to look very suspicious if I have laundry machines turning over my doorstep twice a week, isn't it? We've taken that into account, Mr. Lavery. And we've made adequate arrangements. All deliveries and pickups will be made to the ADZ warehouse across the alley from you. Which is close enough to transfer the money into your safe without alerting anyone's suspicions. Sounds like you've thought of everything. Almost everything. Port Charles is still my city. I'll decide what's going to work. Believe me, Mr. Lavery, our plan is foolproof. 
And you don't mind. I'll be the judge of that. I plan to take a closer look at your plan before I decide to endorse it. I think maybe you're overestimating your importance to our operation, Duke. I'm paid to make sure that the Port Charles plan goes ahead without a hitch. It's not going to be much good to anyone if I'm arrested for laundering large sums of money now, is it? Well, if Port Charles really is your town, then you'll be able to see to it that that doesn't happen, won't you? can't wait to get a hold of you. Classy's <laughs> married now. Oh, I can't believe that you went ahead and tied the knot. Oh, yeah. I... Oh, uh, this is my wife, Felicia Cummings. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Jones, Felicia Jones. All right. <laughs> nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, I can imagine you have, darling. I guess you've seen all of my films. Well, no, actually, I have never seen Hi. any of them. Howdy. You'll get used to her act real fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, actually, uh, you must be a very special lady to uh, have gotten Frisco. He broke a lot of hearts when he took the plunge. <laughs> what brings you back to Port Charles, or Jeff? Oh, well, I'm going to take over the television station again. The LPC? Yes, I used to own it. And when I heard that Derek Barrington had it up for sale, well, I just had to have it. <laughs> I feel I have quite a bit to offer the broadcasting world. I'm trying to lure Frisco back to the station, if you'll come. No, no, I'm very happy with my new career, thanks. Oh, why don't you stop all this cops and robbers stuff and go back to performing where you belong? I mean, why be a policeman when you can play one and just call it a day? <laughs> <laughs> you should talk to Terry about that. She's a good singer and a very good writer. Really? Is that so? I would love to hear your stuff. She sang at a big police benefit and she was a bit. Well, I don't think... I probably wasn't that good because Duke Labor didn't even say a word about it, so... I'll ask him what I thought, what he thought when I get to work. Thanks for what he thought. Oh, well, who are these wonderful gentlemen? Oh, this is uh, Ted Holmes and this is Patrick O'Connor. Gentlemen, Miss Tiffany Hill. How do you do, Miss Hill? Pleasure well, to meet you. The brownstone is looking better all the time. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Bobby, thank you for the breakfast. Oh, the breakfast? Uh, I'll walk you to the door. i got to make some calls. Thanks a lot for the breakfast, you guys. Welcome home, Tiff. Thanks, Take a darling. couple with you. See you guys. <laughs> Felicia, I've been meaning to uh, talk to you about Frisco's suspension from the police force. Oh, you heard about it? Yes, Anna told me. She was very upset about it. And so was my husband. I'm very sorry the whole thing came down to his being suspended. Is there anything I can do? Well, that's all right. I appreciate the offer. I'm sure Frisco and Anna will resolve their differences before too much longer. I'm just trying to stay out of the whole thing. Well, I take it you think I should follow your lead. I would never presume to tell my boss what to do. Hmm. I wish most of my employees were as, as thoughtful as that. Did you have trouble at the meeting? You overheard? Uh, no, I walked into the room and everybody clammed up. I just figured things weren't going very well. Very perceptive of you, Felicia. Um, I've been meaning to ask you about Terry O'Connor. Did, did you like her singing? Ah, uh, yes, uh, I have to admit, Terry has a great deal of talent. Well, could you consider her for one of your nightclubs? Oh, I'll consider it, Felicia, but my advice to Terry is that perhaps she gets a greater repertoire together. If she's going to perform in a nightclub, she can do it just with a few songs that she's written herself. Okay, I'll tell her about it. Why don't you maybe ask Frisco to help her put her act together? Well, now that he has some free time on his hands, Perhaps he can show Terry the ropes. Yeah, well, I'll mention it to him, but he's so upset about being suspended, I don't think he wants to concentrate on anything else. Just, you know, you shouldn't be down here on the docks like this. What are you talking about? I've been walking the docks since I was a kid. Yeah, well, those days are gone. Right now, the boss doesn't want you to show your face around until you leave for Atlantic City, but he doesn't want you back here in Port Charles. I sure would like to know what the hell is going on around here. I was promised job security, and here I am being hustled out of town. Jesse, Operation Tumble Dry is only temporary. The boss says we're going to be back to the usual operation just as soon as the heat cools off. Why is it called tumble dry? I've said too much already, but I said it better now. You know what I mean. I'm sick of being treated like an outsider. 
it's for your own protection. And you think of it that way, Jesse. A little retirement protection. Now, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday, August 5th, 11.30 a.m. Operations changed. New name, Tumble Dry. Or I have to use up all these coupons before they expire. Could you um, pick up a quart of milk? Okay. Can you get some cherry popsicles for me? <laughs> what? I'm an injured man. <laughs> Indulge me. I forgot to mention to you, I talked to Duke about your singing. Oh, and, uh, well, he's not interested, is No, he? that's not so. He really enjoyed your performance at the victory dinner, and he'd like for you to sing at one of his nightclubs. If you could get some material and some new sets. Oh, you're kidding me. That's wonderful. You're Except I can't do it. I, I can't even take advantage of this offer. Why not? Why? Because I... I go to school, I work for you part-time, I'm... I don't have time to get a, a music together. I, I don't know, know what to do. Honey, make Please. the time. Come on, opportunity not. Come on, now, this is worth the effort. It sure is. If I could sing, I would drop everything and I'd do it. I thought you were happy with what you were doing. Well, yeah, I'm happy working for Duke. It's just that <sighs> if I had a second job, it would take some pressure off of Frisco. He's not bringing home a paychecks right now, and it would be a lot less worry for him. What's up? Hey! hey. <laughs> How's it going? You see, Keith? Hi. How's it going? Not bad, not bad. Listen, I, uh, sorry to hear about your bad luck. Oh, yeah. Well, it's nothing losing to sleep over. I'll be, be back on the job in a few days. Yeah. You need anything? Money or anything? Well, no. No, thanks. I'm fine. Okay. Well, listen, don't hesitate to ask, you know. I mean, we waterfront people. We take care of our own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So I thought I'd see at the game last week, uh, as soon as you were my original contact. Yeah, well, uh, I was going to make it, but I was out of town, you know. Uh, I uh, thought I'd be back in an hour or so, you know. <laughs> now, no, I missed a connecting flight. You know how airports are. I missed a flight, so I stayed over a couple of days. I just got back about an hour ago. Right. Well, it's good to see you. Listen, uh, <clears throat> any more games coming up? Hey, I'll talk to the guys. I'll let you know what happens. That'd be great. Take it easy. Tuesday, August 5th, 2.30 p.m. I just caught Tuffy in another lie. I know he's involved in setting me up. Hi, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. I got milk. Yeah. Whoa, it looks like you got a lot more than that. You know, it's amazing what a woman can do when you give her a bunch of coupons. <laughs> I'll get the door. Don't be too long, Jake. Popsicles are going to melt. Yeah. What's that? Oh, uh, it's my little... Music box. I always got to keep my tunes going there. Uh, what are you doing out here anyway? I'm studying. What else? Yeah. Way out here. Is there something wrong with the air conditioning? No. There just happens to be a lot of hot air inside, and I couldn't take much more of it. What's going on in there? Oh, see for yourself. I couldn't begin to tell you. Oh. Just relax. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, hi. Uh -huh. Does that hurt? Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't want to know. Oh, it's really quite therapeutic, darling. It's kind of like a massage. Take off your shoes and I'll do you next. Get on the floor. <laughs> uh, no, I have to get upstairs and make sure Jake's popsicles don't melt. <laughs> darling, Jake's popsicles melted a long time ago. <laughs> oh, and how would you know? Oh, how quickly we forget. Uh, well, don't take it personally. <laughs> Tuesday, August 5th, 11.30 a.m. Operations changed. New name, Tumble Dry. Tumble Dry? It's gotta be some sort of code. Tumble Dry. Yeah? All right. Hurry, please, this is so heavy. 
Oh, honey, what is this? I had a sale on paper towels today, so I thought I'd buy a whole bunch. Um, sweetheart, I wonder if you'd do me a favor, okay? Yeah, would you help me put all this stuff away first? You bet. Mm -hmm. Listen, I want to throw a couple phrases at you. Actually, just one phrase, all right? And I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your head, okay? <laughs> you mean like in the game shows? Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. You ready? Okay. Yeah, well, I don't have a whole lot of time left to play, so, um, would you just help me put all this stuff away first? I have to get to work. Right, work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I will help you, I promise. Just drug, right now. I want to do this, okay? You ready? What? The game. Oh, all right. Okay, go ahead. Tumble dry. Clothes dryer. What? You said tumble dry. So? Well, the first thing that popped in my head was clothes dryer. What, what are you doing? <laughs> you didn't think of anything else when I said tumble dry. No, I thought of clothes dryer, Frisco. What else could it mean? All right, did you see how I got the tumble dry file? Yeah, you typed in laundry. That's right. Now, the only way anyone can see what is on the tumble dry file is to type in the secret access code, which is laundry. That's simple enough. Well, that's the idea. Now, what I want you to do for me, if you can, is to make the entries. Now, to call up the tumble dry file, you have to type in the access code, laundry and tumble dry. And then you type in how much money's been brought in, the date, and where the money's been put for laundering. Have you got it? No problem. Excuse me. Hello, Lavery's office. Yeah, this is he. No, you'll have to talk to my assistant about that. She's not here. Yeah, call back half an hour. Okay. What the hell is going on? All I'm seeing is a bunch of gibberish. Well, you must have hit the wrong key. Now what? Well, you hit the print key. Well, just let it go, and then we'll start at the beginning. Duke, I don't know about this system. Well, it's safer this way, Angel. Only problem is, if anyone ever finds out what's on this tumble dry file, you and I could end up in prison. Hey, Frisco. How's it going? Good. What's going on here with the truck making deliveries, huh? I thought everything usually came in by boat. Well, yeah, usually, but uh, um, just because the uh, harbor is being expanded. You know? So maybe they're uh, cutting down on the traffic in the harbor while they're dredging. Uh, well, uh, see you, Frisco. Yeah, see you, Tom. Tuffy! Hey, Ken, how you going? Hey, how you good doing? To see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. I guess the uh, dock workers don't necessarily like to see these trucks make deliveries, do they? No, nah, that's why I'm here. We got to deal with the truckers. I'm just here to check their out-of-state cards, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was wondering what the treasurer of the union was doing down here checking out the dock workers. Okay, well, now you know. Hold the warehouse here, will you? I'll be right down with the elevator. I'll talk to you later. Hey, yo. How you doing? Pretty good. How about you? All right. What you, uh, what you loading in here? Or unloading or whatever? I'm not sure. I think it's uh, washers or dryers. Come down to the plant. Oh. Good. Thanks. Ah, sure. Mr. Lavery's office. Felicia, hi. It's Nina. Oh, hi, Nina. What's up? Oh, I just called to give you the recipe for that dish that we had at Cop's Wife's lunch the other day. You said you wanted it. Oh, yeah, it was delicious, and you said it was really cheap, didn't you? Definitely. Uh -huh. Do you have time to take it down now? Oh, yeah, sure, let me find a piece of paper, okay? Okay, shoot. Okay, it's a pound of ground beef. Uh -huh. You saute it. And some chopped scallions. Two small cans of tomato sauce a dash of oregano, salt and pepper, some grated cheddar cheese, and also a package of egg noodles. Mm -mm. You got that? <laughs> yeah, I got it. And I think I remember how it was done. Oh, you mix all the meat with all the other stuff, and then, then you let it simmer for a half hour, and you just serve it over the noodles. Great. I'll try it tonight. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Let me know how it comes out, okay? Yeah, I will. And if it comes out okay, I'll have you and Vince over and taste it. A deal. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye.
Tuesday, August 5th, 11.30 a.m. Operations changed. New name, Tumble Dry. Tuffy's up to something overseeing delivery of washing machines or dryers. Does it have anything to do with Tumble Dry? Chris, are you okay? Yeah, babe, I'm fine. No, no, just washing up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. What's that smell? Mm -hmm. I almost burnt the house down. I was trying to light this burner, and I used the paper, and it went up in flames so fast. What kind of paper burns that fast? Oh, it's just computer paper. I got it at Duke's office in the trash. Tumble dry. Honey, what else was on this paper before it burned up here, right up here? Did you see it? Um, huh? Well, I had a, a recipe on there. Partial of a recipe. Was there anything else on there? Did, could you read it? No, nothing. It was trash. Damn! What's the matter? Honey, wh when did you find this? Trash? Where? What was the trash? What do you mean, I trash? Today. Where? W were you working on something? Is uh, this in something? The office. No, I wasn't working on anything. It's computer paper. Did anybody else use this computer besides you? Computer? Yes. Did anyone else use the computer? Well, Duke, he uses it. And, and Tuffy usually uses it for union business. And um, Angel Moran was trying to learn how to use it today. Damn. I can't believe you tried to light the burner with this paper. I'm so, what's the matter? What's the matter? What's, what's the matter? Where are you going? I'll be back later. Frisco? Frisco? What, what's going on? If you, if you get any more trouble, you could be suspended for good. General Hospital will continue in a moment. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Frisco? Is that you, Frisco? No, oh, darling, it's What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, you have those crocodile tears streaming down your face and there's nothing the matter? No, I'm all right. I, I was just helping Cisco come home. Don't tell me you and that husband of yours have had your first fight. No. I, I don't really know what we're fighting about. Oh, you poor little thing. Can I give you some hard-earned advice? Oh, no, Tiffany, you don't have to bother. Oh, it's no bother, darling. I've had tons of experience with this sort of thing. May I, please? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Come Thank you. Now, you say that you really don't know what the fight was about, right? Right. Okay. But that's, that's perfectly normal. It is? Well, sure it is, darling. People in love fight about the silliest things you can imagine. I mean, it's not important. What is important is how you're going to make up. Now, have you thought about that? No. Well, let me tell you what I did one time. I had this wonderful Italian lover. And let me tell you, you don't know the meaning of temperamental until you had an Italian film director. <laughs> well, anyway, we had this huge fight. <laughs> you see, I don't really remember what the fight was about, but he was furious. Do you know what I did? What? I sent this huge limousine to pick him up at some cock and bull story about he had to meet the producer. And I had him delivered to the most romantic little restaurant you can imagine. I had champagne and roses and the most incredible feast laid out for him. And you know what? What? Before too long, he'd forgotten all about our fight. <laughs> oh, Tiffany, I can't afford a limousine. I can't even cook a meal without burning it. Oh, well, then never mind that. Oh, darling, you really don't have to go to such elaborate lengths to make up with Frisco. I've got a much cheaper solution. What? Just say, I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be sorry about. It doesn't matter, darling. If you just say it, I'm sure that he will melt like a pool of hot butter. <laughs> I couldn't even get him to listen to me. He'll listen, I promise. Will you try it? Yeah, I'll try. Oh, good. Now, darling, I really have to run. I have left the Andra upstairs for so long, she's probably fit to be tied. Andra? Oh, yes, that's my decorator. She's left her alone all this time, and I'm sure that if you hear somebody that sounds like they're being murdered, just don't pay any attention to it. Oh, and please, cheer up. I mean, as pretty as you are, Frisco will forgive you anything. I guarantee it. Look up.
Excuse me. Something I can do for you, fella? No. No, I'm just looking around. Well, you're trespassing. You better move along. Oh, yeah. C um... Can I ask you a question about this place? It depends on the question. Um, but does this lead to Sean Donnelly's warehouse by any chance? No, it doesn't. Can't you read the sign, ADZ Warehouse? Any other questions? <gasps> no, no, not, not at all. No. ADZ Warehouse. Must be something pretty valuable down there, huh? Who wants to know? Not me. Good, then move it, all right? Yeah. Frisco, you still hanging around down here? Yeah, Tom. How you doing? Okay. Uh, so, Tom, why would there be guards around this place? ATZ warehouse? Yeah. I never had guards before. No, I didn't think so. There's a couple of them right there. Yeah. So do me a favor, will you? Yeah, if I can. Keep an eye on this place. Let me know if these guards hang out here, and especially if any more show up. Okay, uh, what's this all about, Frisco? I don't know. Thanks for the help, though. Yeah, no problem. See ya. Oh, uh, I just remembered Damn it. something. What's the matter? Did you lose something? Uh, yeah, uh my little tape recorder. Oh. Left it at home. Yeah. See ya, Tom. Yeah, see ya. I'm sorry. I don't know what made you run out here like you did. But whatever I did, I'm sorry. Although you could have at least explained why you were so upset. No, that's not the way you say I'm sorry. Oh, darn that stupid sink. I really hate you. And I don't know what it, what it was that I did that made you so crazy. But whatever it is, I promise I'll never do it again. I just love you and I just want to know what's going on. I don't want to see you get into any more trouble. So if you could just tell me what's going on, maybe I could help. That's what I, I'd just love to do. All I want you to do is just to love me. That's all I want you to know. Oh, Frisco, I'm so glad you're back. What are you doing? I, I was trying to apologize to you. Where did you get this? What did you do to this? What? Did you rewind this? Yes. Did you record over anything? Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. I was trying oh, to no! apologize. Oh, no! Felicia, I don't believe you did this. What do I do now? And I hope Tiffany's right, because I really am sorry. And that's all I want you to know. I don't believe this, Felicia. I can't believe this. You don't believe what? Well, yeah, this is I've, evidence I've had built in here now for weeks, and it's always on my tape recorder here. What? Uh, yeah. What are you talking about? Honey, what? I have been keeping all of my thoughts and suspicions about Tuffy, Stan, Radner, Tessie, the whole works. Everything that's going on down at the waterfront was all right in here, and now it's completely shot. It's gone. You mean I erased it? Well, you, you record it over it. It's the same thing. Well, I'm sorry, but if you would have told me what was going on, that never would have happened. I mean, how was I supposed to know that you were making secret clues on that, Frisco? You never tell me anything. Well, listen, honey, don't cry. Frisco, just leave me alone. I never thought you were such a chauvinistic pig, but if I did, I would have never, ever married you in the first place. Never! Felicia. 
big macho cop, right? That's what you think. You think you're a big macho cop and you think I'm just a stupid, dumb little wife. You think, no, don't tell Felicia. I never because... said anything like that. I don't think anything like that at all. Oh, yes, you do. Then why don't you tell me what's going on? Why are you leaving me in the dark? Honey. Don't touch me. I wanted to protect you. That's all. Protect me from what? What are you doing now? Why did you leave here earlier in a, in a complete crazy way? I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have left like that. I'm sorry. You mean that? Yeah, it's not your fault. None of this. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Honest. I know how much it hurt you when Ramsey and Anna suspended you from the force. Well, you know, I knew you would have done anything just to prove that they were wrong. But Frisco, I just want to help. I want to do whatever I can. I'll do anything for you. I know that, sweetheart. I know. So please, can't you just tell me, what are all these clues that you're talking about? I just can't, baby. Why? Honey, now there's some things that I'm not going to be able to tell you that I just have to do alone. Baby, you're just going to... just going to have to accept that. And it's not because I think you're dumb. Honest. Can't you just give me a little smidgen of clue? Just something. Honey, believe me, I wish I could. This is the last one. Check it. Any problems with the trucker's stuffy? Everything went off. We're not a hitch, boss. Yeah. It looks like it's all here. Well, if it's all there, that should make a total of, let's see, one million four hundred thousand. It's not bad for a first shipment. Yeah, there'll be many more like this. Mr. B wants to launder a shipment like this each week. Do you think we can handle that, Tuffy? No problem, boss. Okay. Angel, why don't you enter this in the computer this evening? If you know how, of course. Yeah, I got it now. I think maybe I ought to go with him if it's okay. Fine. That's a good idea. Tumble dry, gentlemen. There's no full operation.